four. So let's uh, let's. Ah, uh, okay. So six thirty four. So let's uh, let's get the meeting started. Welcome everybody. I hope you had a, a good week, and we uh, I look forward to hearing about uh, the. Uh, Repair Cafe that uh, happened over the weekend and uh, anything else that that uh, was momentous that uh, that came up. Um, so I participated in the uh, association, uh, the annual meeting of the Association of uh, Conservation Advisory Councils. Uh, that was held on uh, Friday and Saturday. Uh, marvelous group of, of uh, people, about 140 people uh, showed up for this uh, virtual event in a, uh, uh, an interesting way to do it because 140 people cannot easily deal with, you know, the, the scene that the, that we're doing on the meeting here with little boxes for everybody's actual photo. The uh, meeting was conducted by avatars. You go to the meeting site and you're invited to uh, customize a little figurine essentially of, of you with uh, hair color and clothes and glasses and what have you. And then uh, when you're done with that, the system places you in the meeting rooms. And there you are, and you navigate with your arrow keys, uh, left, right, up, down, and it walks you through the rooms. You're in meeting room number two at 10 o'clock. Well, you walk over to that, and there, there's ways that you can just go there if you know where it is, teleport it. Uh, and uh, when you get there, uh, you can choose. There's seats around the perimeter of the, of the room, and you can choose to sit in the red seats or the blue seats. The blue seats, you can, you can talk. So in a smaller meeting, let's say less than 20 people or so, everybody sits in the blue seats, and we can all have a kind of a conversation. If you're in a larger meeting, most people sit in the red seats and they can only listen to the presentation. And uh, those who are actually making the presentation go up to what looks like a little wooden platform uh, that they have to go up the stairs to get to and uh, find a microphone and speak into the microphone, which everybody can hear. So uh, very interesting simulacrum of a real meeting that uh, was not quite as, as nice as going to one of the real conventions. And I've been to a couple of the real face-to-face -face meetings in, in years past, uh, but the, the content uh, was as good as ever. Uh, people who were actually, uh, perhaps in some communities that have done the sort of things that, uh, need, that need learning about by many of the attendees, and uh, invited experts in one discipline or another uh, that are talking about uh, things that we need to know. Uh, so access to that and access to the materials that they bring uh, is available. Uh, I'll provide all of you with access to a resource um, a Google Drive uh, a folder with all of the materials presented uh, over the weekend. So that you can use those. And later on, once they edit them down a bit, uh, you'd also be able to watch uh, recorded versions of the presentations. So uh, valuable time. And uh, when it comes up around uh, again next year, I, I uh, would encourage anybody to, uh, to take advantage of it. It was free, and this year it didn't require any travel. So, because uh, they have, for the past 20 years, uh, made an effort to rotate, very good, uh, made an effort to rotate through the state. So, 
Buffalo, uh, White Plains, and every place in between were uh, hosts to the meeting. All right. Uh, as a first order of business here, I'd like uh, to ask for a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting, which was September 27th. I hope you've all had time to review them, or if you had any comments that you hadn't submitted to Maureen, if you had, uh, if you'd like to share them with us uh, here tonight, or I'm open to that. Okay, uh, I'll. I'll take a motion to uh, approve the meetings. I'll make that motion. I'll Bill make a motion. And Colleen. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And anybody not? Okay. Thanks very much. Um, so, why don't we lead off, uh, if possible, with a, uh, uh, a report on the uh, a repair cafe. Would like to say a thing about that. Chris, whatever you're eating. I, I stopped delicious. I stopped eating. I put it away because I'll talk first and then I'll eat. I'm like, God, whatever he's eating. So you had your sandwich in the camera like this close. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I put close it away. Up of Bruce's dinner. Yeah. Um uh yeah, well I'll I'll talk first and then Kara can talk. And Christian, Christian was a fixer, so Three of us were there. Um, it was it was amazing. It, it went so well. It, it was a steady stream of people. We did about a hundred tickets, and uh, we went from ten to four. Every, the atmosphere was great. People were watching what people were doing. People were sharing ideas. I mean, it was exactly right out of the book. I mean, everything went great. It was never so crowded that you worried about the COVID. The area was perfect because we had they moved the fire trucks out. So we had the three fire truck bays, as well as the main firehouse. And um, I mean, everything just went really, really smoothly. Most of the work was lamps and small electronic equipment. There were a few pieces of furniture that got glued. There wasn't as much sewing as we thought there might be. A little bit of jewelry. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it just was a dream how well it went. <laughs> that's, that's my, that would be my impression. Kara and Christian can speak as well. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought it it went phenomenally, and we had people from as far as Albany and down south in Taconic, uh, in Columbia County, several people from East Greenbush. Uh, so people were traveling, um, and they heard us on the radio. They saw our posts, and we had people from uh, from. Citizens Climate Lobby, and just, you know, we saw a lot of familiar faces. Tistria showed up, uh, Denal Collins showed up from Chatham. Kevin, several town board members were there, so that was great. And, um, you know, we had some fine work being done. There were lamps that were rewired that were beautiful antique with beautiful brass pieces and an old... We have some great photos. Um, we had a beautiful ornate wooden screen that was worked on for a while. Um, definitely, like Bruce said, we could have used some more people with mending repairs or, you know, fabric mending repairs or knitting. Um, but, you know, even though these, there was a, a woman there with her needles and all her yarn and nobody needed any darning or um, knitting done. So she started teaching the other women that were sitting around her how to knit. And then next thing you know, the woman was coming over that was manning the computer booth and she had her needles and she was doing the, like an impromptu lesson. It was just kind of really in the essence of what this is all about is, you know, sharing and teaching and helping or keeping, keeping stuff out of the land, the landfill and, bringing communities together. So we're very excited. And on to the next one. <laughs> All right. Do you have a schedule for it yet? Uh, it sounds like Chatham's pretty enthused about doing one in the spring and Austerlitz certainly wants to do one. We're kind of waiting to hear final word uh, from the CSC folks um, because in the action items, the way that they describe this, the, the points, 
that a town or towns can get for this. It says in a calendar year. Um, is to mute their phone. Um, anyways, uh, what was I saying? In the in the guidelines, it says that their two repair cafes have to be done in a year. But it's unclear whether it's a 12 month period or a calendar year. So hopefully we don't have to pull a, a repair cafe out of our um, behind between on, now on and New Year's Eve. Year. <laughs> <laughs> we will do it though. We uh, <laughs> in a firehouse. It was a lot of fun. Great people. The fixers were great. Christian, do you have anything to add? I could say that it was very, very well. It was very, 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 very well. Well. Well, 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 well. Uh, Christine, you're, you're, you're breaking up, and there's a lot of static on the line. Is there something to be done about that? You know, what can be done is that this is a lousy you know, what system. Can be done is that this is a lousy system. we got to change it. I have right. no trouble with any other I system. Have no trouble uh, with any other system. I've got here. Strange. Uh, okay. So well, uh, no, so no offense intended. I understand, but it's really, really frustrating. I but it's really I'm on, uh, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of these meetings. and dozens of issues whatsoever in this. Understood. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Uh, I'll just say it was very well done. Uh, I'll just say it was very well done. I've never seen so many fixers. I've never seen so many lectures. I've good support for the fixers. I've good support. I repaired four lamps. I repaired two toaster ovens. And two toaster ovens. I repaired two toaster ovens. And two toaster ovens. I repaired two toaster ovens. And two toaster ovens. Uh, involved, uh, got more and more enthusiastic more about everything and about the whole process. Uh, about the whole uh, calling people up and talking to them about uh, what they need and that it's so wonderful to be saving these things from the landfill and, and, these things and, from the landfill. and uh, uh, to be having these items all returned as a service instead of the drum service instead of the drum yard. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, well, as as uh, Kara said, this is this is right out of the book. Uh, marvelous stuff, David. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, it sounds great. And I had another event. I couldn't. No, I'm sorry. I, uh, sorry. Popped up here. Uh, I just had a question about what you perceive to be the demand, and and maybe it's elastic because it just amount, amounts to getting out to more people. But did you feel like you could meet the needs of the people who showed up, uh, and you know, or or were you a little overwhelmed at times? Were there people who weren't you weren't able to service, even though you had the area of expertise there? Uh, and I think about you know what what are your thoughts about. Uh, scale and permanence, you know, creating this type of thing on a regular basis or even, um, you know, having a, a storefront in the county that actually could operate as a, as a kind of a permanent fixture of what, what we do here. I, I, um, it, it, we got, it was pretty steady. We never, I don't think we ever were overwhelmed. I don't know. Um, it was, it was steady, but that's happenstance. I mean, if everybody came at once, but um, we, we felt we, we set it up for too long. We were set up for 10 to 4, and by 3 o'clock, everybody was basically done, except Christian. Christian was there right till the end. But um, most of our fixers came at 10, and they were out of there by 1.30. So I, I think we probably set it up as too long, but we were never overwhelmed. Um, I think that there's going to be a lot of word of mouth, and people are going to tell everybody, hey, I got my stuff fixed. And um, I think... Uh, one of the questions almost everyone said is, when's the next one? I have more stuff in <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. part of the, the charm, I guess, of the Repair Cafe is that it's, um, you know, you've got these fixers from the community that are coming out. Um, and so I guess if, it, if there was a storefront like Repair Cafe, that might change, you know, change it to like a reuse center like where we have people that we pay, you know, to fix things. So it could blossom into something tremendous like that for sure. Um, but uh, we only, you know, once we ran into a little bit of a traffic jam with lamps <laughs> and, and so we took the, the, their sheet, they, they said that they had errands to run and we texted them when we had a 
space open and they came right back. So they were very pleasant and very appreciative. And, um, but definitely lamps was a big, uh, there was a lot of demand for fixing lamps for whatever reason. <laughs> well, great job. It's really exciting. So yeah. thanks for all the hard work and uh, blazing the trail for us. Exactly. I'm, I'm sure the, uh, the word will get out and uh, each successive one will bring more stuff from the same people and, uh, and new people. And new people. Yeah, right. exactly. exactly. So. And, and to be fair, Philmont did do a couple repair cafes and Castleton has had repair cafes. So they've been around this. It was just, we called a lot of attention to this because there were several towns involved in the mix. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, uh, that's marvelous. Uh, while we have you on the line, Kara, is there anything to report regarding Solarize programs? Um, well, uh, we've got Kinderhook and Chatham going on, um, going strong. Kinderhook, there's uh, enrollments almost every day that come trickling in. And, you know, Chatham has um, petered out a little bit, but, the, you know, there's still, it's still a Chatham is more of a trickle and Kinderhook, but Chatham's been going on for several months longer than, than Kinderhook. But the guy, the Climate Smart Committee has been getting the word out and the farmer's market was a great way to broadcast that. It really was. Since there's, um, there was Bill Mancini or um, Warren Applegate from the CSC and Kinderhook were always present at the farmer's markets and having that sort of face-to-face -face interaction really goes a long way. Hey, have you signed up yet? Hey, have you signed up yet? So yeah, I dragged a few people over. <laughs> yeah, they did a great, they've done a great job. And um thank you. Well, so did you. Australis is <laughs> launching theirs next week. And so we're excited about that. And and while I'm on, if you don't mind, um just want to plug something that has come about for the Australitz Climate Smart Committee, in a large part due to Paige Ruan who's on our Climate Smart Committee, we were able to get funding from, it's called RSF Social Finance, and they have funding available. So we were able to get a grant for a, a CSC coordinator um, and the job posting, it's a part-time position for the year. Um, and oh the posting has, I can share the link, um, in the chat, but it's also on the Osterlitz website um, has been posted. And any resumes should go to Greg Vogler. So if anybody here on this call knows of maybe a college student, I was gonna reach out to University of Albany and a couple local colleges. Steve, while you're on the phone, if you know of any students that are studying you know, uh, sustainability or in some sort of civil service type of, um, education pathway, or if anybody here knows of somebody that's looking for part-time work, you know, we definitely, though, it's, uh, I think the, I think the job posting will have kind of anticipated um, hours of commitment listed, so, and resumes should be sent, it, sent to Greg Vogler, so that's it. All right, super. So an example for perhaps some of the rest of us who uh, are trying to get their CSC programs uh, moving along and uh, couldn't hurt to have somebody who's at least a part-time paid administrator to, to focus on that as their job. Super. Uh, so uh, dealing, uh, continuing on the realm of climate smart communities, uh, is there anything the people who are involved in CSCs in their town would like to uh, like to share about what's what's uh, what's the progress, what's going on? And then there's David. Uh, in the town of Ghent, I'm happy to report that we've had a bit of a dormancy. I'm not happy to report this, but I will be a happy ending here. Uh, there's been a bit of a dormancy in our climate smart efforts. Uh, 
uh, one of our town board members, Mal Mort, has been very, uh, had been previously very active and had gotten a bunch of things done, but they had never gotten around to uh, applying for certification or continuing the process. And um, we now have uh, a community member has, has stepped forward uh, who's very excited to kind of take the take the lead. And so we're going to revive that committee. And he's offered to bring Cornell in to do an assessment, which is great um, at his expense. And that's really generous of him uh, and uh, help us move forward. So uh, we're excited about that. And again. Great, great. Colleen, you had a hand. Yeah, um, we actually are working on kind of organizing our climate smart um, tasks that we've done because we've done both the clean energy communities and climate smart at the same time. They kind of got all scattered everywhere. <laughs> Um, just trying to make sure that we have our documentation, but we've been working with Cornell and um, we figure that we've laid it out that we've already done enough to get bronze certification and we're going to be going above and beyond that. So right now it's just a matter of getting everything in and documented properly. Um, and if I was going to say, David, I would highly recommend working with CCE on that. They have actually gone through and worked with the committee and actually laid everything out for the Climate Smart uh, Task Force to kind of really organize us so we know exactly what we need to do and when it needs to be submitted and everything. So, um, and they're actually looking for letters of support right now uh, for, com for communities. So if you wanted to get into that, I would suggest talking to Kelsey. And if Ghent wants to do that, it would definitely help. Super. Anybody else? Okay, uh, David. Yeah, so just on the county level, um, Please. you know, shifting gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the progress has been um, uh, plotting. Uh, slow, but, you know, we're, we're pushing forward. Uh, uh, and, uh, and we are continuing to make progress. Um, we have a roadmap and we've done an assessment. We did this previously this summer with the help of an, uh, an intern from, uh, Cornell. Uh, she was great. And, uh, we, uh, have finally overcome some, uh, procedural obstacles with regard to our countywide solarized campaign. And so we've put out an RFP light. We did, we realized, uh, after, uh, some back and forth. Uh, that we didn't need an RFP, so that was good. Um, that delayed us a while. We put this RFP out. Uh, it's uh, it's still an RFP, even though it's not an RFP. Uh, and so that was put out last week, and we expect in the next couple of weeks to get proposals. And at that point, I think this group will be really helpful in particular because what we're going to want to focus at the county level I think the campaign should be focused primarily in those areas that don't have active town solar campaigns, where there probably are a lot of residents who haven't been able to access these types of programs. Um, not to say we would exclude anyone from other towns. Uh, and uh, to help anyone in those towns who would like to um, bootstrap onto this effort uh, by uh, getting some clean energy points and a, potentially a grant. Uh, by getting a scoping document put forward at the same time concurrently as we launch our campaign. So more information to follow, and we expect in November we'll be um, reviewing the applications. Hopefully we get some good applications, and uh, and then we can communicate out um, and help coordinate with some of these scoping documents to the towns that haven't been well represented yet by um, their own task forces. Uh, and that's uh, that's the basic update for now. Great, thank you. Uh, more on the uh, the conference, though. Uh, there was a, a right session there. on climate smart right. communities, and one of the presenters was the uh, uh, was the mayor of a of a village in Westchester County who had gone to the silver level of uh, certification, and uh, they did you know some marvelous uh, work about how they did it and. You know the way that they incorporated more people into the team and uh, uh, got mobilized the community around it. It, it was uh, 
well worth uh, listening to. So uh, I'll I'll make sure you know that's that's part of what you'll be able to access, Daniel. Yeah, uh, just can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to say that the town of Stockport has finally decided to deal with solar panels. Actually, there are a few houses in the community that have rooftop uh, solar panels, and they're putting through legislation now. Uh, they never had legislation as to what is, you know specific should be and so on for zoning, which is good, and it, it, it looks pretty good. I mean, we actually copied a few of the towns around and so on. And, um, you know, it's what it is. They're also dealing, this one cracks me up, because they're dealing with windmills. Now, one thing the town of Stockport does not have is wind. And if you don't have wind, how can you have windmills? But nonetheless, they're doing it. Uh, the reason being that some idiot may decide to come in and put in a, a windmill in the middle of uh, Route 9 or something like that. And they want to have some kind of regulation so that they can prevent them from doing something stupid. The town itself is not a good place to put up any windmill because it lacks, totally lacks, uh, the resource of wind for what it's worth. Okay. All right. Better to think ahead on these things. Yep. <laughs> Just in case. All right. Anybody else on that? Okay. Uh, Carol, you're muted. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. I just. I, I um, gonna, oh, oh, Carol. Sorry. <laughs> oh, pardon me. That's okay. Carol Smilly. I don't know if Tara's talking or if I was going to. Yeah. Well, you were uh, both I just going wanted to. to say that. <coughs> excuse me. That Gallatin's going to start uh, moving forward on our. <coughs> I'm sorry. I got a chip in my throat. <coughs> um. Yeah, so we're going to start moving forward on the climate smart. And Colleen, I wanted to reach out with, to you and see maybe there's some opportunities for us to join forces as far as doing things like repair cafes. And, I, I, you know, maybe there's some opportunities where our towns can join forces. So uh, I'll, be, I'll be reaching out to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's Great. it. Okay, Tara. I was just going to say that, Daniel, I, I remember a few years ago, there was uh, an, an issue down in Ankrum with, with a wind turbine that was put in, and it caused create a, created a ruckus. And I think the town did work on some you know, requirements. So you might, you might check with Ankrum and see what they've come up with in that realm. Because um, I remember it was, you know, they were calling our department, too, at the time. So um, I'd be happy to send you, you, you more to regulations. If you want, I have them. Yeah. The they um. Yeah. It was it was it was about yeah. Okay. I'll send uh, you regulations so you know, if you we want. We have them. the regular. We have the regulations from a whole bunch of towns okay. on all of these things, which we're uh, going over and evaluating them and see which ones uh, would work in the town of Stockport. Obviously, windmills would not be a problem, but nonetheless, they want to put in some legislation regarding them. Solar panels. There are some spots where they can actually put up solar farms if somebody wanted to. And we have that pretty much nailed down. And we'll be sending it to the town board uh, probably uh, sometime later this uh, at the end of this month, which is almost over anyway. So we, we that's the way we've actually been working is by looking at what's out there now and then see which would fit in with our town. And it's a progressive group that's uh, working on it so that I have a confidence that something positive will come out of this, or whatever, whatever it's worth. Okay. Great. Super. Well, keep on, keep on doing. Uh, anything to be said about zero waste? John, did you uh, want to say a few words? Uh, I don't have anything to report uh, at this point. Uh, when we had our little meeting this week, uh, this month, we talked a lot about repair cafes and uh, Christian might have, have something to add, uh, but um, at this point, I don't. Well, I, I uh, 
since I have such a terrible connection, I would only report that uh, we had some interesting conversation about the possibilities of local regenerative uh, organic fuel production in the county and its uh, place in our local farms economy, uh, developing both uh, soils and the circular economy. Okay. All good things. Um, how are we doing in the health department? Well, we're hanging in there. <laughs> Um, our, <laughs> except we were closed to the public the last couple days last week because we had some COVID uh, positive cases within our building, um, one of which was my coworker that sits directly behind me. But so far, so good. My Moderna is holding strong. <laughs> um, we are, our county is holding at a 4.5% um, positivity rate in the last seven days. So that's lower than the last time we were together. It was about 6%. And it's still quite a bit lower than Greene County, which is like 6.3%. So, um, but we're still pretty steady with cases. We had 17 cases today, and that was positive since Saturday. So um, there's three people hospitalized. We're holding at 103 folks that have passed away from COVID. Um, so, you know, it's it's steady, but it is what it is at this point. We're we're now gearing up to have uh, booster shot clinics. We started with one uh, Pfizer clinic that wasn't super well attended. There were 25 people that signed up for it. We thought that was probably because Pfizer was not yet widely available when we first started doing the shots in the beginning of the year. And it was very difficult, the storage requirements and everything, and nobody really wanted to handle it. So. We figured that might be why we didn't have so many folks come out for a booster for that yet. Um, but we are now uh, permitted to start administering the Moderna booster shots. It's the half, it's a half dosage of, of what we got initially. Um, and so the first of those booster shots is going to be Thursday evening at Columbia Green Community College. We're back there in the cafeteria for the next few because um, they're not using the cafeteria at this point. So four to seven Thursday afternoon will be a, a, a COVID in the booster clinic. Um, they're doing Friday morning and Friday afternoon, same time, same place there at the college. Um, and I believe there's one Monday. I don't know the, the day or the time of that because I, I can't see my other screen without closing this one out. So, but um, all of the, the shot clinic times and registration links are on both our website and the uh, Facebook page. So you can go there to, to sign up if you'd like to do that. Um, and also, I just wanted to remind our last rabies clinic that we're having for the year for the dogs, cats, and ferrets is coming up Saturday, November 6th in uh, Kinderhook at the Martin H. Glenn School. And it's going to be Dr. Sturwall doing the shots and 2 to 3 p.m. is the cats and ferrets and three to 4 p.m. are dogs. So if anybody knows anybody that needs to get their animals boosted, it's been it's been tricky. I guess people with pets have trouble getting into the, the vet this year still. So, um, but that's all the, the last one we're holding for this year. And other than that, I don't really have too much else new to report. Well, good, I'll, I'll, I'll hope new news is good news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Christian, did you have a question or a comment? Uh, Christian, did you have a question or a comment? I do. I don't know how the audio will come through, so I put it in the chat. I'm wondering if Tara has any information on the uh, total uh, deaths from all causes in the county uh, last year and, uh, and, and this year to... Uh... I can try and find that out. I don't know what offhand, but I can ask because I, I believe they get all the death certificates and that all has to be, you know, logged in. So I don't know if they keep a, a running table or tally of that kind of thing, but it would be interesting <laughs> to know. Um, yeah, I'll try to see if I can find out. All right. Okay. So um, that's what I had on, on, 
on my agenda. Was there anything else that uh, we, we can uh, learn tonight? Stephen. I <clears throat> uh, can't hear you. Um, I had a question. Sure, go ahead. I was wondering, um, of the um, of the um, recyclables that uh, Columbia County sends to, I don't know where they send it to. I mm -hmm. believe it's out of state, but of the you know paper and tin cans and all that stuff, I think it's called in the single flow because we throw it all together. At least at, in uh, Greenport and at. Um, um, Hillsdale. I was wondering how much of that is actually recycled. Do we un do we know how what percentage of that is actually recycled? Mm, good question. Where it goes is to a vendor whose name escapes me right now, but who is located in Albany. So our recycling goes to them, and then they are responsible for identifying, for separating it and identifying markets for the, the various materials. And uh, as I think you know, certain things are easier to market than others. Uh, aluminum cans are, are easy. Uh, mixed uh, uh, paper and broken glass is uh, nearly worthless. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a challenge um, to, to do that, but I'll ask, uh, then why is it sing why is it single flow then if it's a challenge why do we oh, I think that was not a, separate well, it? I, I think uh, I mean other people will have their opinions about it but uh, in my opinion it was it was not a smart thing to do uh, because uh, all of the tr the the training that uh, was given to people over the years since we've been recycling that you should you know carefully bundle up this material and separate it from that material and so yeah, forth exactly. uh, was all of a sudden wasted and you toss everything in the bin and people do what is referred to as aspirational recycling, putting things like styrofoam or plastic wrap uh, into the recycling bin, thinking that's, that's good for something, but uh, it, it winds up being a mess. And that's why Five years ago, China decided that the that the mixed the, that the bales of supposedly one product like paper or plastic or what have you were in truth uh, contaminated with as much as twenty five percent stuff that isn't mm -hmm. on the <laughs> isn't on the label uh, that makes uh, using it on the distant end to make you know a a, a pile of paper that. Uh, was perhaps going to make a paper box, which is necessary for them to ship stuff to us, turns out to be uh, too contaminated to even make a cardboard box out of. And so they decided, right. well, uh, we're, we're not going to deal with this anymore. We'll figure out some other way to ship stuff and you guys deal with your, deal with your garbage. So uh, it's, it's a nationwide challenge. And here in Columbia County, we're in the we're right at the beginning of figuring out the next 10-year uh, plan for what to do with municipal solid waste. And certainly uh, recycling is going to be a big part of that, uh, uh, of that package of how much is, uh, is uh, able to be used or, uh, you know, dealt with in one is way that, or another. Is that part of your zero waste initiative? Uh, in a manner of speaking, yes. I mean, uh, uh, I've been part of the, the 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 committee that is is working with a consultant to develop the plan, and uh, that's 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 been my contribution. That says essentially we need to incorporate the zero waste uh, principles and the idea behind it into a long term plan, not just. 10 years, but thinking that, you know, at the end of those 10 years, we should have achieved a few steps on the way towards a, a, uh, a Columbia County, which doesn't have so much total waste at all. And that which we do is, is uh, 
better organized and that we can better handle and all you know with with the idea that this these are steps towards uh, the, the zero waste ideal and that also what one of the other things I emphasize was that we need to um, we need to have more community involvement uh, so that people don't just toss their waste away which those of us in this meeting know that there is no such thing as a way uh, that it all has to go somewhere. And uh, uh, if we get more people like the CACs and the other community organizations involved, then we can do a better job of educating people about uh, these things. So that's the idea. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just, I understand that. I wonder why, I mean, as you said, we were educated citizens were educated and then it just got to well you throw it in the same bin right you know you no, throw the, your papers and your tin cans in the same huge bin and it's kind of obvious that it well it seems it seems like not much is going to be recycled well i i've i've been to a a uh, a material separation plant a couple of them and mm -hmm. uh, with the technology today, I went to one uh, that was brand new, uh, just uh, shiny and <laughs> uh, you know, right, right out of the box. And uh, it was amazing what they can do with... Uh, uh, was that the one in Albany? No, this was in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, ah. and, but Albany <laughs> has a nice one too. But the... Uh, uh -huh. The the ability of the of well first off you have a bunch of people pulling obvious big things you know rubber boots off the conveyor line, and then you have a variety of other machines that separate the waste based on the light that passes through it the weight of it the uh, an air stream that blows some stuff blows away some doesn't the size of a grid that you pass it over. Uh, and at the end of the process from one of those systems, you wind up with, with fairly pure output, but, but still, you know, it's not as good as it might be uh, if, if it were sorted out at the, at, at the consumers. But I, I think part of the impetus to, oh, to do a single stream came from the waste haulers uh, who wanted something simple from their point of view uh, that to reduce their labor costs of the pickup. So they, you know, send the truck down the road and, you know, pick up uh, perhaps a bin with a mechanical arm and toss it in the back and on to the next one. And from their point of view, that's that's the that's kind of the end of the story. But of course, yeah, it they doesn't recognize the rest up, of the, the rest of the universe yeah. of where waste goes. Right, they're in a business and that they get paid to do that, and so they need to. I don't know. Doesn't seem fair that well, the now whole we're, now we're system. Paying the price for that. The, the, yeah, it doesn't the, seem uh, fair the, that the whole system has the, to has to be uh, lopsided and go in the wrong direction because it's a commercial entity can't can't get its act together. That's, well, they got their act together and fair. they convinced us that single stream was the right way to go. <laughs> Oh, depends Great. on how you define okay. that. Yes. Mm. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, and and if you if you I can uh, if you want any uh, volunteer to help, um, I don't know with um, figuring out how to make our our um, collection of recyclables more efficient. I'd, I'd I'd like to try to help out, especially in the winter. Oh, indeed, indeed. Oh, it's um, the out. I just came across my notes here. The outfit that handles the recycling and the construction and demolition waste uh, is an outfit named Corella. So, uh, the, the let me let me just give you a couple of other points here. Uh, the county is going to redo uh, all of its. Uh, uh, transfer stations to make them work better. They're all old and and uh, decaying, so those are all scheduled to be uh, to be redone. There's a food waste 
uh, pilot program working in conjunction with the uh, Gromax uh, outfit, which uh, already does uh, commercial scale uh, composting. And uh, uh, we did a composting test on our own back in the 90s. That, who runs Gromax? Uh, who runs it? Mm, I'm not sure, but I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Gromax is in... Uh, it's in Austerlitz or in Clob Ghent. Does it have Clob in Clobrick. Doma, right? Clobrick. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Roxbury yeah. Roxbury Isn't Road. that Kippy Weigelt? Yes. No? Okay. Well, we have an in there. Uh, they're still going to do hazardous uh, materials pickup uh, once a year. Uh, although to get points for it, we need to do it two times a year, but we'll see. Uh, it's an expensive thing to run, just a one-day uh, system. Uh, and they're going to, this, this uh, pilot project uh, is going to include uh, possibly Chatham and Copic uh, collection of uh, food waste from the larger producers of, uh, of food waste. And let's see, uh, education uh, is going to be ramped up. Private haulers have their I own. Can, I can say that they've, they've started that, I've noticed. Um, in our office oh, building, they placed a rather large sign in our kitchen, in our break room. We have mm. a recycle bin. We've been recycling for years, but I think it got found out that it was all just going in the regular trash because it wasn't, people were putting things in there that weren't recyclable. So yep. now the county has made large yep. signs with photos and it shows you exactly what number of containers can go in it and what can't. So they are starting to do that. I'm assuming it's in every office building now. So that's a good sign. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Well, that's a big it's, sign. <laughs> it's it's about time, and and uh, <laughs> certainly I, uh, I have, without doing anything about it, I've complained uh, about the waste pickup in Hudson, and there's been no effort to educate people about what's the correct thing to put in the bin. So uh, I, there's there's a lot we can do in each of our towns to uh, tighten up this. If uh, I mean we have curbside pickup. But uh, uh, even, even for people that are going to take their waste, uh, their recycling to a transfer station, it's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy, to, happy to hear that they're finally doing good signage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, Stephen, did you get your audio figured out here? Okay. You can you can write notes and hold them up to the screen and <laughs> even put a note in the chat box. Oh, I haven't seen it. So it sounds like he said I'll send a couple of emails to the committee. He had a couple of questions from a student and a quick announcement from a coworker about worldwide climate teaching event that will be happening in March. Exactly. Yes, and uh, the. Uh, uh, I, I went down to Columbia Green uh, two weeks ago uh, to meet with the, uh, the president of the college and uh, several of the deans. Uh, they, they asked, uh, they, I made a presentation to the Columbia County Chambers of Commerce Board of Directors and uh, the president is on that board and she asked me to come down and speak to, to uh, her staff about what the college can do. And so uh, the Climate Smart Communities Program is not quite, not quite for a, uh, a academic uh, environment, uh, but I turned them on to a association of uh, sustainability uh, managers for colleges that uh, they can plug into. And I went down there with uh, uh, Eben, uh, Goodstein, who runs the uh, who runs the graduate uh, environmental studies program at Bard, and uh, he told them about this uh, this teaching opportunity 
that uh, is, is a, a, a very interesting idea. It's happening in March, and uh, Stephen will send you, send you some stuff about how it's going to go down at, uh, at Columbia Green. All righty. Okay, that's that's my agenda. Any other uh, any other contributions here? All right. Well, uh, actually, Michael, in that case, Michael, I would like to ask Daniel. one question, and that is, please. Uh, there seems to be a lot of concern about you know what happens to waste in the county. Now we have Jolene. Now, wouldn't it be helpful if Jolene came down? I know she has in the past occasionally, but come down and we have a list of questions that we could ask her. Sure. I yeah, I'll, 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 uh, I'll bring that up with, with her when I talk to her and uh, be happy to, to make that suggestion. Uh, yeah. We've always had a, a good meeting with her in right. the past, so why not uh, come in and update us? Right, I mean, we have, should know where this stuff goes. What oh, is yeah. prohibited from going into recycling specifically, mm -hmm. you know, not just ge generally, but specifically True. in terms of types of plastics. Uh, right. I know you're not supposed to put in uh, uh, glass plates, like broken windows and so on, like that and so on. Mm -hmm. I think that we really should have a list of those kinds of things, which could be problematic. So that those are the things you want to deal with. You don't want to deal with, you know, the newspaper. But you do want to deal with kinds of plastics like plastic wrap and so on, which is plastic, even oh, though it, it can't be recycled or it's not recyclable. You know, what can be done so that this thing doesn't fill up the environment and do all the nasty things that it's capable of doing? Certainly. The, 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 other, the other thing that's uh, kind of looming on the, uh, on the horizon here is uh, most of New York's waste goes out to Western New York, the town of Seneca, which has a huge uh, land area that's uh, for uh, solid waste. Uh, it's, you know, a regular sanitary landfill that is, you know, just enormous, uh, but it's, it's finite. And it's estimated that our current rate uh, that it will be full uh, within the next few years. It's, it's, uh, so th th there's another sort of uh, edge to this thing that will influence how New York State communities deal with their waste. Uh, well, perhaps then it should be, some, maybe somebody should hit the for the state legislature to oh, see if indeed. they can there's, come there's, up with something. There's a lot of players in this. Uh, and Certainly, uh, certainly, that's that's uh, some of those things are going to require legislation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's it's good also to educate us as to what sorts of plastics can't be recycled, and then you educate the public, and then hopefully we could educate our legislation, and in that you know there could be some deals made where that plastic, if it's the uh, if it's a single-use plastic, that we're, it's not to use it. Anyways, to just to educate and put more and more pressure on, on not having plastic that can't be recycled and just trying to do less and less with plastic and more and more with things that can be recycled. Right. Or like you, hemp, or, a lot of hemp you. product can be recycled. There's so much that we can do. It just seems that we really need to split the pie up a bit and also educate people so that when the legis anyway the legislation meets with with the with these huge plastic companies and blah blah blah, they can maybe um, um, stick with the public more. Let's just say, indeed, indeed. and what's good for the public. Well, uh, New York State has been uh, a center of innovation in in that regard. Uh, there's a there's an outfit up in uh, in the Albany area that makes. Uh, uh, package cushioning uh, for shipping fragile things. You know, you unpack a computer or a TV and it's got all those styrofoam uh, typically to keep it from breaking. Well, these folks have made essentially the same customized form-fitting uh, wrapping for fragile things out of uh, 
fungus. Mm -hmm. They essentially grow yeah. a fungus in a, uh, a medium, uh, which is kind of ground up sawdust. And uh, when it cures, uh, it, it assumes the shape that you would have molded out of styrofoam for your wine bottles or your TV or whatever the heck it is. And they have a, a, a big plant that uh, is punching these things out uh, all over the place. So it, it's, it's, that, that's going to be one of, the, one of the innovations that will allow us to get away from the single-use plastics and packaging. Well, I just wanted to point out the question in the chat from Maureen Gardner asking who the uh, the identity of the person who's been asking the recycling questions, whose uh, phone number uh, ends, in ends in eight one. Who are you? That's Mary King from Mary King from um, Hillsdale, CAC. All right, thank you, Mary. Okay. Thank you for for, <laughs> for the chat, the education. All right, all right. A mystery voice in the in the group here. Uh, I'm sorry. I thought the name came up when the number no, came just in. The I phone no, number. just the phone number. Just I have no idea number. how this works. <laughs> That's okay. Now you do. So, mm -hmm. all right. Thank you both. Uh, all right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn for the uh, for the evening. All right. I so move. All right. Anybody against that? Not hearing any objection. I'll uh, I'll accept that as uh, a common consent, and uh, that'll be it for the evening. Thank you all for uh, for being here, and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Bye.